Okay. Did we, did we just start recording or did we stop and then start again, John? We stopped recording for the last one and now we're recording again. Sweet. All right, good. Let's get rolling then. Welcome, guys. So um, this week, we're going to talk about something that we haven't talked about before. Um, but specifically, it's money management and profitability. Money management and profitability. And uh, that is not something that, you know, it's not something that's discussed a lot in the real estate industry. Probably for a couple of reasons. Number one is agents aren't willing to be, they're not willing to really like look behind the curtain <laughs> and share with others. God, are you actually making money or is it just a big show? You know, are you just driving a nice car and rolling around town, but you can't really afford it? Um, and, and in many other cases, agents just, just going from deal to deal. They're living essentially paycheck, paycheck, really. And that's what a lot of this industry is. So there's not a lot of talk about money management and profitability. And yet, what a great topic to discuss so that we can actually plan and kind of live into more of a business-minded approach to this real estate business. So let's start with point number one, which is money earned is the result of the work that we do, the effort we put in, and the service we offer other people. That's how we earn our money, right? So what kind of work are we doing? What kind of effort are we putting in? And how high or low is the level of service that we're offering other people? In other words, if you're not earning the kind of money you wanna be earning, look at that, you know, that point. How much effort are we actually putting in? If we're not earning the money we want to earn, are we working an hour a day? Or are we working four hours a day? Or are we working eight hours a day or 10 hours a day? What is the effort we're outlaying? And what is the level of service that we're offering people? Are we not making the money we want to make and at the same time offering crummy service? Right? The two are very much interrelated and interconnected. So the next point, if, you're, if you are without the money you want, if you are without the money that you want, it's either because it's three things. Number one, you do not give people the service they want. Number two, you're not able to set goals effectively or achieve those goals that you've set. Or number three, you're unable to control your spending. It's one of those three things. If you don't have the money you want, then it's a service problem. It's a goal setting and goal achieving problem, or it's a spending problem. Anybody know a thing or two about having a spending problem? I do. That was a, a very good education for me to learn how not to do it, but it was a very valuable lesson in education. Next point, profit is what is left after you subtract your expenses from your income. Pretty obvious, right? Don't forget to put your taxes into that scenario. So profit is your, your, your income, take expenses out of that, and don't forget to take your taxes out of that. You know, if you make 100 grand or 500 grand or a million dollars, is that 100 or 500 or million yours to spend? No, <laughs> there's taxes, don't forget about that. Very, very important. Next point, life is about making decisions quickly. Any delay in making decisions costs you time and money. In many cases, we do have to make decisions quickly in this business. And delaying them does cost us time and it does cost us money. There's a certain speed at which business happens, right? When you're prospecting for a listing and you find somebody that wants to do some business, is there a certain speed and efficiency towards turning that lead into an appointment into a client? Absolutely. You don't wanna take three months what could take three days or three hours They'll just list with somebody else in the meantime. Make decisions quickly. 
How about when an offer comes in on your listing? I'll just wait a few days. I'll present it when I have some time. Nope. There's a speed at which business happens. There's a speed at which decision-making happens. So Mike Ferry talks about it all the time. Make decisions quickly. The one thing that happens, there's a few things that happen, but sometimes you don't make the right decision. But because you're making them quickly, you can adjust. And that's a wonderful way to learn how to really make great decisions. Next point. Earning money and making a profit are a numbers game like any other numbers game. Learn the numbers that are required for you to achieve the goals that you've set. It's just a numbers game. So how about, you know, working it backwards, you know, rather than just go from deal to deal, how about actual, actually having a plan in place? What are the numbers required to achieve your goals? What are your goals? Is your goal to buy an investment property this year or buy a house for yourself to live in or upgrade your car, put a certain amount in savings or put some X number of dollars towards investing? So just learn those numbers understand those numbers and it really helps to motivate you to do your job at the highest level every day consider using multiple checking and savings accounts to manage your money for those of you that just have one account and everything goes in there consider having a business account and a personal account and a tax account and a savings or investment account so one general protocol, if you don't have one already that you use, one general protocol that you could follow is 30% of your gross goes back into your business account. 30% of your gross goes into your personal account for spending, for living. 25% of your gross goes into a tax account. And 15% of your gross goes into a savings or investment account. It's a good kind of rule of thumb to follow. Next point, hire an accountant, a bookkeeper, a financial planner, or CPA as soon as possible, and ask each of them to teach you the fundamentals of what their business is and listen to the advice that they give you. These are really smart people. My tax guy or my bookkeeper, I, I can't do what they do. And they have a different approach and, and really have a tremendous amount of knowledge to share. So as soon as you can, make sure that you're working with really smart people. Be in conversation with them. Ask them questions and take their advice. <laughs> Next point. If your profits are not where they should be, here's a few things that you can do immediately. If your profits are not where they should be, number one, you can cut unnecessary expenses by 20%. There's always expenses that can be cut, right? Number two, you can increase your income by 20%. So while you're cutting down your expenses, increase your income by increasing your productivity. How do you increase your productivity? Work smarter, work harder, work more hours, right? Do what you gotta do. That's B. C is do both A and B, <laughs> right? Cut expenses, unnecessary expenses, and increase your income. Number four is increase your prospecting. Increase the number of people you talk to, the quality of conversations you're having every day. And those are some things you can do if your profit is not where you want it to be, right? So again, cut unnecessary expenses. Increase your, up your income. Do both A and B. And, and D, increase your prospecting. Increase the amount of people you talk to and increase the quality of the conversations you're having with those people. This conversation around money management and profitability, obviously a lot of the conversations we generally have are about income producing activities, but my goodness, there are people that I know that make a million bucks a year or 2 million bucks a year and they literally outspend their earning. How do you do that? Wow, you make a million bucks a year and you spend a million one? How do you do that? 
You make two million, you spend two one or two two. Yeah, people do that all the time. Or you make a hundred thousand, you spend one hundred and ten thousand. So here's some, you know, that that keeping of the wealth, right? That's the name of the game. Doesn't matter how much you earn if you've got nothing to show for it at the end of the day. So here's some points, some money and profit ideas, let's just say, to think about. Number one, pay your credit cards off every month. If you're going to use a credit card, if you're going to get points or whatever, pay it off at the end of the month. Number two, stop throwing money at problems. Stop throwing money at problems. Sometimes during a negotiation, you know, we will, I will throw money at it. It's really not a necessity. But somebody might say, um, you know, we're having a, a negotiating thing. I say, listen, I'll just cover it. I don't want to hear it anymore. I'll just throw in the thousand bucks and, and cover it. Don't worry about it, guys. I'm not saying that's a good thing. It's something I do probably because I don't want to hear it. But that's an example of throwing money at a problem. That can generally, 99.9% .9 of the time, be negotiated. You know, hey, guys, listen. Mr. Buyer, you just want to buy the house. Mr. Seller, you just want to sell the house. Why don't you guys meet in the middle? Let's not squabble over 500 bucks. Get the deal done. Give everyone what they want and let's move on, right? There's ways to get past that. Next point on just some, some little money and kind of profit ideas to think about. Don't give exorbitant client gifts. Your service is enough. You want to give a nice client gift? You know, we usually do some wine at the end or a gift basket. There are some people that spend $500 or $1,000 on client gifts. Not necessary. Your service is enough. And you want to do a nice little gift? Fine. I had one client once. She was so difficult. She was so rude. And she was so mean. And she goes, Aaron, you better get me. You better, me and my sister, who are this lady and her sister are selling, you better get us bottles of Dom Perignon when this, when this uh, transaction closes. I was like, oh, that'd be a nice gift. It was like $475 a bottle. I was like, nope. Got her a, a, a bottle of Veuve Clicquot. You know, it was like a $60 bottle of champagne. Fine, you want champagne? Here's your bottle of Veuve. Like, we're not getting Tom Perignon, dude. And if you're going to be upset about, if you're going to be upset about me for that, fine. I don't need to work with you anymore. Hmm. She wasn't. She was happy. Next point about some money and profit ideas to think about. Don't spend money you haven't paid taxes on. Very, very easy to spend money when it's sitting there in the palm of our hand. But the reason why we have a tax account, like we mentioned above, and you take, you know, 25% of the money and throw it in that tax account. Because you don't want to spend money you haven't paid taxes on. Because guess what? At the end of the year, you got to pay taxes. And if that money's spent, it makes it really hard to pay taxes. And the last point about saving you know, some money and profit ideas to think about, have respect for the money that you earn. Really have some respect for it. It's uh, money is, you know, when we make money, we're stewards of that money. Real important to be respectful of that money. It's, it's, a, it's a powerful thing, right? Next point, once a week, visit your money. What does that mean, visit your money? It simply means check the balance in your accounts, assess your investments, review your financial goals, visit your money. Oh, I don't want to see it. I don't want to look at my account solo. No, look at it. <laughs> visit your money once a week, okay? Your accounts, your investments, your financial goals. You know, keep your eye on the ball, in other words. If you're not keeping your eye on the ball, then there really is no plan in how to move forward. Next point. Determine exactly how much money you have to earn each month by going through the following exercise. This is important. So exactly how much money you have to earn each month. So starting with this, number one, your total personal and business expenses 
for the month. Your total business and personal expenses for the month. Okay, what is that number? Business and personal expenses, and you write it down. Is it 5,000 a month? Is it 50,000 a month? Total business and personal expenses. What is that number? Add it all up. Then you, you look at number two. Your total outside income, aside from real estate, how much outside income do you have? Do you have investments that give you some income? Do you have revenue share through this company, your EXP? Do you have an investment property that's throwing off some income? Do you have a spouse that works that's bringing in income? Do you have an annuity or whatever? Your total outside income. And then C, the difference is blank. And that's what you need to earn in real estate. Okay, so you have your total business and personal expenses. Let's say they are 10,000 a month. And you have a spouse that earns 5,000 a month. We'll use very simple numbers. So the difference is negative $5,000 a month, right? Now you look at what is your average commission check? Well, I need to earn $5,000 a month just to pay the bills, right? My, my, it's costing me 10 to live. My spouse brings in five. I'm negative 5,000 a month. My average commission check is $10,000. So what do you have to do? You have to literally sell six homes a year just to break even, right? That's kind of how you look at that calculation. Guess what? That's why most agents sell so little, such a little amount of real estate. They just sell enough to get by. Be complacent. But that's where goal setting comes in. Because you can say, listen, I already know that I have to do six transactions per year on my average commission to break even, but I have other goals. I have an investment property I want to buy. I want to take my family on a terrific vacation. I want to, I need a new car. I want to upgrade my house. You know, I want to save for my kid's college. What's that going to cost me? Okay, well, it's going to cost me an extra, we'll use our round numbers. $5,000 a month. Therefore, I'm going to make my goal 12 deals a year and not six deals a year. Like build upon it from there. That's not good enough. I want to have a bigger house and then maybe my expenses won't be five, 10,000 a month anymore. Maybe they'll be 15 a month because I'm going to have a bigger mortgage. <laughs> what has to happen to motivate you to set higher goals and then just work backwards and determine how many homes you must sell to achieve those goals. Now, what generally motivates people, there's two things. One is fear and one is um, inspiration, like the, 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 the carrot and the stick, right? The pain and the pleasure, right? So by really identifying these numbers and understanding what your expenses are and what the minimum you must make, that's a fear-based approach to doing business rather than a more inspirational approach about achievement and achieving certain goals. Play with that a little bit and really determine why you do what you do. Are you just operating out of fear to just cover your expenses and make sure that you don't go into debt? Or do you get inspired by having a goal that you can actually achieve and then raising your expectations of yourself to meet that goal? And the last point with regard to money management and profitability, it's a shorter call today, is this. Remember, your biggest business expense is your ego. Ego and profitability are not friends. If you want a big ego and big profits, your money is heading in opposite directions. What does that mean that your, your biggest business expense is a big ego? Ego is a very dangerous thing. 
So ego is what tells you, oh, that other agent that I just lost that damn listing to, he drives a hundred thousand dollar Mercedes. You know what? I'm going to drive hundred twenty thousand dollars Mercedes. I'm going to show. I'm going to show him I'm better. <laughs> what you drive. You know, I got to have a Rolex. Very important. You know, that's ego. You don't need a Rolex. Um, ego is. I'm going to show the community who I am. I'm going to put a huge ad in the paper. That's an ego play. For anybody that's putting an ad in the paper, how many times your phone actually ring from that ad? How many buyer calls or other seller calls did you actually get? Much of the time, it's just an ego play. Look at some of the real estate ads, right? It's just, you know, ego or fear. So your ego can be a, a, a real detriment to profitability. So having your ego under control, all of us, is really, really, really beneficial. It's not easy to say, you know what? Um, I want to live in a bigger house, but I can't afford it right now. I'm going to keep my ego in check, live below my means, and go earn that new house by setting goals and being able to afford it. There's an agent that once said, your ego is not your amigo. <laughs> That's very true in many, many aspects of your life. It's not there. To, it doesn't necessarily serve you in a very favorable way. So just have an awareness of that. Let's open up the mics a little bit. Who's got some questions about money management and profitability or any other aspect of the business? Prospecting, lead follow-up, mindset, anything and everything. All right, good stuff then. Well, let's wrap it here then. Short call today, but a really important call today. And, and hopefully you all will take a little bit of action to being more, better stewards of money and more profitable real estate salespeople. All right, guys, have a great day. Take good care. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks, guys.